This is Bob Capetta, and this lesson is on piecewise functions. So let's take a look at the kind of function we're talking about. So let's say I have f of x equals 2x when x is less than or equal to 1, and it is 4 minus x squared if x is greater than 1. Now, this looks like two functions, but in fact, it's 1. And we can go ahead and see how it behaves by plugging in some values. So if I want to know what do I get when the x value is negative 2? Well, I've got to decide which branch of the function am I on, x less equal to 1, x greater than 1. Negative 2 tells us x is less than or equal to 1, so I use this branch. So this branch tells me f of x is 2 times x, so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. If I'm at 0, I am still on this branch, so 2 times 0 is 0. If I get to 1, again, still on this branch, x is less than or equal to 1. Remember, the vertical line test tells us I can only have one answer to a given x value. So if this is x less equal to 1, this could not have been x is greater or equal to 1. If that would have led to two different answers, that would have been a problem. But 2 times 1 here is 2. But when I go to x equals 2, what do we have? Now, boom, now it moves to the second branch. Yes? And the function tells me that it's 4 minus the x value squared. 4 minus 2 squared, which of course is 4 minus 4, which is 0. And let's do one more point. If I choose an x value of 3, again, I'm on this branch. 4 minus 3 squared, 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Now we can look to see what this function looks like. So we have one portion is 2x and another portion is 4 minus x squared. So if I graph y equals 2x, what does that look like? Straight line like that. But remember, we're only allowed to use it for x is less than or equal to 1. Now I can do this on Desmos. How? Let's get a nice image of this. What I do is, is I say x less equal one. So notice what happens now. It only uses that branch of the function when x is less than or equal to one. Now the way I program this, this is going to look like two functions, but in fact it's going to be one. If I have four minus x squared, excuse me, y equals four minus x squared. Right now if I have both this red piece and this blue piece, this would not be a function because it would fail the vertical line test. You get a vertical line like this one, like x equals negative 1 that would cut it in two points. Boom, boom. So no, this is not a function as it's currently constituted, but we said this was a piecewise function. I'm only allowed to use that second branch when x is greater than 1. Now it still looks like two functions, but in fact it's 1. And to emphasize that point, I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this so they're both red. So here is my graph of f. Now what's happening at 1? Remember that was the point that we had to use this graph. So at 1 we had the value of 2. So to clarify I'm going to say 1 comma 2 is going to be a point on the graph there and again I want that to be red. So that was the point because x is less than or equal to 1, I am on this branch. Now up here, what's happening at 1? If I would have plugged 1 here, even though I'm not supposed to, 4 minus 1 squared, 4 minus 1 is 3. So it kind of looks like 1, 3. But that point's not really there, is it? What do I have to do? I have to make sure that it's an open circle. So this is what we get for our function. This is our graph of f. This is how we program it on Desmos. It is not continuous. The two pieces do not come together. But I want you to notice that it also does what? It also enables us 
<clears throat> to recognize that this is a function because it passes the vertical line test. This vertical line, x equals 1, only goes through one point. Can we see that? x equals 1 goes through this solid point. That's an open dot there, so that one's OK. And anywhere else that you would go, indeed, it's going to go through just one point, so this will be a function. And you know, if I want to ask a question like, oh gosh, I don't know, let's go ahead and construct a question here. So when does f of x equal negative 2? I want to solve for that. When does f of x equal negative 2? Well, is there some way for me to look at the graph to answer that question? Let's take a look. So for what x value do we get an f of x that equals negative 2? So the y that I want, I want y to equal negative 2. Where does it cross? It crosses here. So we get that point, x equals negative 1. So one of those values is x equals negative 1 is one possibility. Now, does that surprise me? If I plug negative 1 into this first branch, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and that's the branch in x equals uh, negative 1 on the first branch. Now, how about that second branch? What's happening here? Where else does f of x equal negative 2? It equals it there, which Desmos is telling us Go ahead and show you on Desmos again. So where does it equal negative 2? We have it here. We have 2.449 gives me an answer of negative 2. Just like on the first branch, we have negative 1 giving me an answer of negative 2. So we have negative 1 as a solution for f of x equals negative 2 and 2.449. Is there a way for me to find out what 2.449 is going to be? Can I answer this using algebraic techniques? I think so. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to plug it into that second branch. When does 4 minus x squared equal negative 2? Add the x squared to the other side. 4 equals negative 2 plus x squared. Add 2 to this side. 6 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides, and I get plus or minus root 6 equals x. But remember, x has to be greater than 1. So the only answer I need is x is the square root of 6. And what is that in terms of a decimal approximation? No surprise, the square root of 6 is about 2.449. So let's go back and look at that function again. And uh, we can see how it behaves. Again, two different pieces. It is not connected, but again, this is a piecewise function, so depending on where I'm at, I have to use a certain piece of the graph. Now, that had two pieces. Let's construct one this time that has three pieces. So let's say g of x equals 4 minus 2x when x is less than 0. Let's say it equals 3 for 0 less equal x less 2. And let's say that it is 5 minus x if x is greater than or equal to 2. Again, this is one function. Sometimes you put a little brace here to emphasize that fact. So let's just go ahead and fill out some elements in the table, and then we can try to graph this on Desmos. So here's x. Here's g of x. If I choose negative 3, I am on the first branch. x is less than 0. So it's 4 minus 2 times negative 3, which is 4 plus 6, which is 10. If I choose negative 1, I am still on that branch. 4 minus 2 times negative 1, which gives me 4 plus 2, which is 6. If I choose 0, <clears throat> I'm between 0 and 2. 
and the value of that function is three. If I choose one, it's three. If I choose 1.99, and notice I'm less than two, it's still three. But as soon as I jump to two, it moves to this branch. X is greater than or equal to two, five minus X, five minus two, still three, interestingly enough. If I go to three, I'm on this branch, five minus three, which is two. So I'd like to go ahead and graph this using Desmos to give us those various pieces to see how this function behaves. So again, if you want to go ahead and evaluate this function, determine which branch you are on, determine which function is defined on that branch, plug it in and see how it behaves. So let's get rid of everything that was there before. And I want four minus two X, Y equals four minus two X. But that is only gonna be when X is less than zero. So this is what we get. So you can see that that is heading up in that direction. Next up, we get Y equals three. And when do we want y equal three? X is bigger than or equal to zero. So zero less equal to x less two. So we get that piece. And then our last one is going to be, and let's make them both green. I like it to look like one function. And uh, then we have our last piece, which is five minus X. And that is for X is bigger than or equal to two. And I'll also make that green if I can. So here's our function. I, I probably should put in open circles or closed circles. Uh, the break point here was at zero. And at zero, the number I had was three because I was on the second branch. So zero comma three will indeed be a solid dot. So we get that one. But this one up here, which is zero four, is an open dot. So we still have a decent chance to satisfy the conditions of the vertical line test. The vertical line still only hits it in one point. But notice, interestingly enough, these two pieces came together at two. Because on this branch, it would have been three if it continued. On this branch, it was three. So indeed, the function is continuous at two. Um, where it's not continuous at zero, there's a break between the two branches. So again, to evaluate a piecewise function, you determine which branch you're on, plug the numbers in and see where it goes. So let's do one more of these and we can talk about how it behaves. This time I'm going to say H of X is two over x minus three. And I'm interested in what is the domain and what is the range. Now notice this is not piecewise yet. I'm gonna adjust it shortly. But I wanna take a look at what that graph looks like before I construct a piecewise function. So looking at that, what are we gonna get? We're going to get uh, y equals 2 over x minus 3. And what do we notice? Well, we notice that the domain includes everything except 3. And the range, you'll notice it never gets to 0. The function gets as close to 0 as you want but it never gets to zero. So domain, everything but three on the X, possible X values, range, everything but zero. So domain, 
the set of x such that x is not 3. The range, we'll say the set of y such that y is not 0. Well, there's just something we can do with that. Something we can do with that. Well, let's create a new function called k of x, which will equal 2 over x minus 3 when x doesn't equal 3, and it equal 4 if x does equal 3. So this is a piecewise function. So you'll notice everywhere you needed it to look, it needs to look like 2 over x minus 3. So again, we have our graph. It looks like this, 2 over x minus 3, except when x equals 3, we want to put an answer in of 4. 3, when x equals 3, the answer is going to be 4. And again, I want it to be the same color so that you believe that this is one function and not two. Oops. As we'll try to, there we go. So there it is. Now I want you to know now that the domain has changed. So before the domain was everything but three, now I have a value for three, three comma four, k of three does equal four. So for this piecewise function, I can say k of three equals four, so three is in the domain. So now the domain includes everything. So here we conclude domain is all real numbers. If you want to write that in um, interval notation, that of course is minus infinity to plus infinity. And looking at our picture, this is what we have, right? All of these x values, negative nine, negative eight, negative seven, negative six, et cetera, all show up one, two, two and a half, two and three quarters, all show up on the function somewhere. Three shows up on the function somewhere here. 3.1 shows up on the function somewhere, so does four, so does five, so does six. So the domain is everything. Now, what about the range? Remember, the first time we said the possible y values included everything except zero. And that's still the case. Because, okay, fine, four shows up in the range twice, that's okay, you can have the same y value showing up twice, you just can't have the same x value showing up twice. So my range here is still everything but zero. So that's not gonna change in terms of our discussion. So again, we will say range is all real numbers but zero. So you could do that in interval notation. You would say negative infinity to zero round bracket union round bracket zero to plus infinity. That would be a way to express that notation of uh, the range for that function. Okay, that will conclude this lesson.